Well, this being Canada, I think we all know we can't have good news and have good news. Bad news out of the way first, the Oilers dropped Game 7, and the Cup remains in the U.S. for yet another year. Well, that's indeed a bummer. Those of us hanging our hopes on the Toronto by-election got a very awesome surprise. That's right, Don Stewart has clinched it for the Conservatives. No, it wasn't by much. Don won it by just under 600 votes, 595 to be exact, and it sure did take Elections Canada a hell of a lot of hours to get the vote going. They were a full 60 minutes late in getting the count started, and they didn't get the final tally in until way past last call. I'm sure everyone involved in this by-election needed a good drink when all was said and done. So just like that, a writing that served as a liberal stronghold for 30 years is gone. 30 years! Think about it. If you were born the very year the liberals got that writing for the first time, by now you are a fully grown adult, you've completed university, you can be married, have a wife, kids, and a house. I'm just kidding, this is Canada. If you're 30, you're living in your parents' basement. And you have... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just getting excited. Today will be a very interesting day for those of us who are glued to politics as there's been a lot of speculation that Justin Trudeau would take this as his cue to step down if the Conservatives took the writing. If he doesn't step down, prepare to see countless stories carrying the narrative that he'll get pushed out. Personally, I don't think he'll step down. Ego aside, I think he wants to milk that final 16 months for all he can. Uh, he is a different animal than his father. Like, there's a lot of similarities between him and Pierre, but yeah, he's definitely his own man when it comes to politics. It also needs to be said that there really is no key heir apparent who could step in and take over for him and make a true impact. I mean, look at Christa Freeland. Christa is definitely a no-go. I mean, did you see that video that I posted of her pre-by-election speech? She went on to call conservative voters cold, cruel, and small. That is not exactly going to win over hearts. You know, you don't go torching the other team when you're not getting your way. Christa, in all her years in politics, in all her years just on this planet. Politics aside, she just doesn't understand that. I don't see her being successful as the leader of the Liberals. I know a lot of Conservatives want to keep Trudeau in power as he makes them look good, but I'm telling you, if Freeland was their leader, the Conservatives would have a field day with her, but she would not be good for the Liberals in any way. Then you have the next candidate, and that would be Dominic LeBlanc. LeBlanc is a very smart, well-read individual, but where he'll fail is that he lacks Trudeau's charisma. Now it doesn't fee now it really doesn't matter how you feel about Trudeau. The man has an admittedly strong ground game, and I've been told by people who've met him that he can be really charming and very engrossing. And LeBlanc is simply just neither of those two things. He can articulate valid, intelligent points, but that intellect aside, he does not exude any of Trudeau's warmth or charm. So, so if you were to put LeBlanc up against Polyev and his populism, like Dominic's just going to get buried each and every time. Like he doesn't stand a chance on the persona front. And then finally, we have Mark Carbon Tax Carney. Not sure if you remember Michael Ignatov, but I strongly recommend you look him up. If the Liberals go with Carney, it would be a violation of that fundamental rule that those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. I'm telling you, just look up Michael Ignata for yourself and you'll see what I mean. The parallels between him and Carney are way too close to comfort, so I think that's a no-go as well. While I'm very happy to start the day with this news, I only wish Parliament was still in session right now. Could you imagine how much the Conservatives would repeatedly bonk the Liberals over the head with the fact that they lost one of their safest seats? I know many of you watching right now are discouraged at knowing that we still have the Liberals in power for another 16 months. But tell yourself this, when we finally get to October 20th in 2025, we will have a blue wave like no other in Canadian history. This by-election victory has shown us exactly that. Not only that, but the Liberals have caused so much damage that I'm predicting a three-run term for the Conservatives once they do get into power. So sound off in the comments, and feel free to congratulate the Conservatives in the comments as well. Thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already.